Three long days from I don't know It takes a little more than what you show And that's yesterday Yeah, yesterday Welcome to Bobby Finn Knows Everyone Part of the Pull Tab Sports family I am your host Bobby Finn Born and raised from St. Paul's East Side Where everybody's looking out for each other Blue card hard work and telling like it is, and that's what you're going to get on our podcast. We are recording from Cub Content Studios, and along with me today, as usual, my co-host, Tom Lord. How are you, Tommy? Hey, I'm doing really well. How are you doing? Doing great. Great. Got a fun guest here today again. We do have a fun guest. We, let's not forget about our guy behind the curtain, the Wizard of Oz, Chris Salazar. How are you, Sally? Hey, boys. Hey. The uh, man behind the curtain. I almost forgot about him. Yeah, well, I mean, he's not very forgettable. He, he's the Wizard of Oz. He really is. He just does all yeah. the all the work back there. But we have our guest for the second time, David Levake. Oh. How are you? Doing well. How are you, sir? Very good, buddy. Very good. I Thanks should say, for, how are you, gentlemen? I'm sorry. Thanks yeah. for coming, man. Thanks for coming. I know there's a lot of shit going on around <laughs> with everybody being sick a little bit, but you yeah. got a little horse right now. It's on Dave, you're the same way. Yeah, yeah, I got through mine over right before Christmas, so that was good. Sally's got his going right now. David's got a little stuff going on. Bobby had to leave the bar early the other night. Can you believe that? He's like, I got to go. I'm not feeling great. It's like, yeah. what a baby. I know, seriously. It's are, you, are you like uh, one of the owners of Pull Tab Sports, Tom Geardy, who what his bit is if I go out, if I'm not feeling good, I just he he says if I'm not feeling good, I go out and drink because then I, in the morning when I wake up, I don't know if it's a hangover or if I'm just sick. He just goes, like, I don't know, I'm kind of hungover. It's fine. <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> it's like know the difference. Yeah, it's like That's that fantastic. way you don't know the difference. You had fun the night before, <laughs> and now you wake up kind of feeling crappy. But either way, you're feeling crappy when you go blue. Either way, at least you know what you got, right? And I like you it. think that it might start killing some of those cells off. Yeah, those those evil freaking sickness cells, mm -hmm. right? But no, oh, thanks, fellas, for coming in. Obviously, you're here all the time. You know, we're gonna we're gonna start this out by thanking one of our new sponsors, Dent Heads. You know, we really appreciate you sponsoring the pod. It's fantastic, and you know, for everybody, car lovers, if you got dents, stings, or hail damage, listen up. Dent Heads painless dent removal is your key to a flawless ride. Why settle for less when you can have the best? With the highest ratings in Minnesota, boasting over 400. Five-star Google reviews. Dent Heads delivers excellence. For simple dents, use common sense. Trust Dent Heads for your car repair needs with all the paint fuss. Visit Dent Heads to find perfection on wheels. Thank you, Dent Heads. Dent Heads coming in hot. Hot. I like it. Yep. It's going to be hail season coming uh, up real Coming soon. up. You know where to go. It was almost hail season like a month ago, and it was December, and it was warm, and... And, How uh, weird is that? <laughs> rain and what storms. A weird, I mean, weird seriously, crap. what a I was weird. like, we just flooded the rink uh, behind Billy's house for the first time. It's just like, where's the, where's the cold? Where's the snow? Where's the outdoor hockey? No ODRs going on right now. N neighborhood rink. There's kids there all the time. We can't even do it. Yeah. Have you used your snowblower yet? Um, that's me picking up a shovel. So. <laughs> but I mean, not nobody's used anything. I, I did bring the shovel out the other night to to clear the driveway, but but not. It wasn't a yeah, it wasn't a big investment like they usually get to be this time of year. You know, as bad as it is, this stretch right now with a sub zero, it's the back half of January. So we're we're don't Halfway have much there more already. to suffer. Yeah, right. Uh, but yeah, that's I. You, you talk about outdoor rinks. I was a little worried because. There was, I don't know what year it was now, but you remember the name, um, uh, <laughs> you remember the name, uh, Eden Prairie kid, uh, Casey Middlestad. He was our player of the year, and we were going to have the sh photo shoot at his rink in the backyard, and it, they weren't, we, we weren't able to do it because it was too warm, and, and then, uh, so we, we put it in the uh, Eden Prairie um, Community Center instead, and right. That the, the funny story about that is, Car, the, Carlos Gonzalez was the photographer that was shooting it, and Carlos is great. He's a madman, and so he said he got this idea. He wanted to take a picture of we have you know like a, the hockey team, the first team all metro. You got five skaters and a goalie, and he'd have them line up at the blue, and skate toward them, and put the brakes on and spray them. Yeah, and 
they did it over and over again to the point where Carlos looked like a frosted mini wheat. The front of him was <laughs> completely white, and then his, the back of him was the color of his jeans and his his pullover. But he he was he was really excited about the shot he got, and it was a great shot. So then fast forward a little bit to the Mr. Hockey uh, banquet after the state tournament. The mother of the goalie was I think it was Eden Prairie or uh, Hill Murray goalie at the time, maybe Jake Begley. But his mother came over and she said, "Yeah, Jake came home from that photo shoot." I said, "How did it go?" And he said, "Mom, I'm tired. I didn't think I'd be doing that much skating at the photo shoot." So yeah, this modeling gig is tough, you know. <laughs> we know you've been hearing about Chill Boy's life changing underwear, and you know that we love them here on the Bobby Finn Knows Everyone podcast. But what you might not know is there's three key products to be a card-carrying member of Chill Boys Nation. First, there's Bamboo Boxers. their relaxed fit style that traditional boxers for the days when you feel like running free. Think of them like going to an off-leash dog park and letting the boys run all day long. Then there's Bamboo Boxer Briefs, snug fit for the days when you need a hug from Mother Nature. A little support system to keep things organized. And then there's Performance Boxers. Yeah, here we're getting a little fancy. Relaxed fit that's softer than your wife's most expensive yoga pants. It's almost like you turned your favorite golf shirt into your favorite underwear. So visit chillboys.com and use pull tab 15 for 15% off. That's chillboys comfort where it counts. So if you don't know David Levesque, David uh, is a writer for the Star Tribune, covers a ton of high school hockey. He has a book called Tourney Time. You got to check it out. We've got one. Um, everything you ever want to know about the Minnesota high school hockey tournament. And uh, it's really good and, and just a historian. Uh, he knows what he's talking about. He covers high school hockey, which we're big, you know, passionate fans here on the podcast about high school hockey and, and uh, sports in general, as you know, if you listen to the podcast. So um, we're going to have a lot of fun talking to you today. And, and a couple of interesting projects you're working on. Uh, one is you are embedded yourself with the Chanhassen high school team. Um, who are having a fantastic season. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they are. I, every time I, I go track them on, I, I think Star Tribune still runs Minnesota Hockey Hub, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, so it's just like, it's that's a great repository for high school hockey. They constantly win. Boom, win, boom, win, boom, win. And, and uh, you don't re- always see the Chan Hassan up there with the with the other um, kind of the superstars of the of the uh, high school league so upper echelon yeah, yeah. the upper echelon what, do, what what have you learned so far about hanging out with those guys well like you said they're just very talented they you know and there was, was a little bit of concern because in the summer when i started going to a few of the because they have the uh, practices in june and july the coaches have access to them and we can and can work with them i went to a few of those sessions and there was a lot of worry at that time about who exactly was coming back who wasn't and the list of who wasn't was fairly lengthy. And I thought to myself, ooh, wow. I don't know if we're going to – I mean, we're committed now to doing the series, but it's just going to lose a little bit of its luster. Um, but the uh, but over t- as the summer went along, guys started changing their minds. Guys started you know coming back or staying, however you want to phrase it. And the last, uh, the last domino to fall was the goalie, Cam Hendrickson. And he – because he was a case where – He learned the hard way, like a lot of high school kids do when they make the jump to juniors or attempt to make the jump to juniors. They get they get to uh, to understand the term healthy scratch, Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. and he was on the outside looking in and consistently. And if you're going there for for development and you're not playing games, it just doesn't add up. Yeah. And so he said, "I'm coming back." You know, and I might be said, "I, I, I felt I. It was going to be better for my development to actually play. And let's face it, I had my buddies begging me or, or bothering me to uh, to come back because you know you can't have you can't make your hockey dreams without a solid goalie. You know, so you know he's still he was back and they started a little slow. They they lost uh, they had a good good schedule, but they lost to, I think it was Andover and Rosemount, and that's how they started the year. But then they kind of got on track and then they played Minnetonka in overtime. And they've been fairly, cons- you know, consistent since then, and have been putting up some big numbers on the conference opponents. And and you're watching different guys emerge. I mean, you had guys that had to figure out their roles or, or figure out you know, gain their confidence back. And you know, one of their key guys had played football on the on the team that won a championship. So they had a, it took a little. They were, they were a slower burn this year, right? 
you know, so that uh, that's that. But they're now they're what we thought they would be. Oh yeah, you know, solidly in the top four spot in this week's Let's Play Hockey ranking. And unfortunately, and we knew this going in, but unfortunately, who was in their section? Tonka. That's right, Minnetonka. Yeah. So this whole thing could end with a gut punch, you know, when when the time comes. But it's gonna be it's it's been a heck of a ride thus far, and it'll only get better as we get into the playoffs. So how much are you in with this team? So you go in, you go to practices, you go to games, and and uh, you, you were hanging with the kids in the summer when the coaches aren't there. Are they are they opening up? Are you? I, I kind of envision it to be like I don't know if you've seen Ted Lasso, but they get they get the guy who hangs <laughs> out with the squad, and they're like they're not really sure if they want to talk to him. They're not really sure how much they should be saying around him. Are you getting all the the uh, the good stuff? Yeah, well, I I don't have quite quite that access, but. I know with the first uh, installment of the series that we wrote, the, the our photographer was allowed into the, the dressing room to get some shots yeah. behind the scenes, and so very appreciative of the access that uh, Coach Sean Bloomfield has granted us. And you know, I I've actually because I got a late start later than I planned, I, I, I had to we had to make adjustments, and I didn't want to just waltz in now middle of the year. I just right. I wanted to be around a little bit more in the uh, in a more casual sense yep. and then maybe go in and, and when, you know, they're, they're, uh, you know, going to play a couple of big games down the stretch. Right. So I'm just trying to be respectful of it. But Sean has been like, Hey, you know, whatever you need, come on in. These guys are used to pressure. It's fine. Like, okay. Maybe you should join them on Xbox. Like, like you don't, they don't know it's you and you're playing chell against them. You're playing Fortnite. They're like, who's this freaking dude that's putting me in the ass right now? What do you, what do you like, call them? Go. What do they call those people? Christmas noobs? <laughs> Is that it? Christmas noobs. That's great. <laughs> they just got their Xbox and they want to jump yeah. in and play. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's great. I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, that to, to have to go through Minnetonka this year is going to be. It's a, a challenge. real soft but challenge. They, obviously, they have the talent, right? A lot of those kids, you know, grew up playing a breakaway, right? Yeah, right. And so that's one, of, arguably the best program in the state. I mean, you got the maid, you got a few others, you know, but breakaway has done a phenomenal job getting these kids prepared and and ready to do anything. Yeah, and I had wanted to do that, and will be doing that as part of the second part of the series, is kind of getting an understanding of breakaway academy and the philosophies and and <coughs> excuse me what what worked out timing wise is i got an email because uh, we, we teased to the part two of the series uh, at the end of the part one and the woman uh, emailed me and said uh, are you aware that minnesota hockey is having a meeting to discuss breakaway academy because so many kids uh waver in to to this uh to our youth association and we just we're really tired of it and we have suggestions for how we think think it should look and and protecting our kids and blah 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 so i had a conversation with the district six rep the other day and he acknowledged you know yeah i you know i understand parents frustration if you're paying taxes and you're living in the community and all of a sudden someone comes in and you know even if you're maybe like a you, if you thought you were a third tier kid or whatever if a guy comes in at the top tier there's a domino effect. Oh yeah, you're not gonna play. Everyone drops down on the peg, right. you know. So he said, "I understand that," and he goes, "But th that's the trouble is we're trying to be community based, and we're also trying to honor uh, kids that are, are playing at the lo local high schools. So it's 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 gonna be a, an interesting conversation Sunday. But I can't figure out the right recipe for that. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I mean, it, you want to you want to acknowledge you want to re, you know reward. All the kids that grew up, the parents pay right. fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars a year right. per kid to play in that association, whatever association it is. Then all of a sudden, a kid comes in and you're at the bottom of the food chain. You're not going to be there. So yep. I, I mean, from mites to high school, how many years is that? Six, seven, six probably. So yeah, six, fifth, yeah. let's say just say six, ten seven. to fifteen thousand dollars. And it's more than that. Obviously, it's an emotional thing, right? It's mm -hmm. You you build all these relationships with these other parents, you know. You, you you stop being friends with who you're really friends with to be friends with parents that are around your kids. Yep, yep. You know, and and that's a tough thing. And then all of a sudden, you get f four kids that transfer in. You're like, oh shit, there's Mrs. Freaking Larson gone. You know, 
Why would I say Mrs. Larson? I don't even know who that is, but she probably was cute. Well, if there's a Larson in Minnetonka, in Minnesota, it's, it's, a, it's a generic enough yeah, name. Right? Where there's a lot of Mrs. Hey, Larson. Hey, Mrs. Larson. Hey, Mrs. Larson. Mrs. Robinson. Yeah. But no, it's it's tough, and and there's no perfect recipe because obviously you want to win, but at the same time, where's the breaking point? Yeah. You know, there's got to be. There has to be something because you can't just do a rent an apartment and maybe you don't even stay there. And, it's it doesn't make sense. I don't know. Yep, and they're they're seeing that not only Chaskachan, but you know Minnetonka. They've got a, their share of imports, and and you know you go down a the list. There, any, any solid team you could name through the history has had people coming in. I mean, we I wrote Tourney Time with Lauren Nelson, and he had the oh what the heck was it? Sometime in the fifties uh, when Rozo won one of their championships. They had a couple of kids from Canada. Well, yes. You know, and in and, and the 60s, International Falls, they had Huffer Christensen from Hughesville from Fort Francis. So this has been going on for a long, long time. I heard that about War Road, too. When we were up there, I was talking <laughs> oh, yeah. to the Marvins, and they are giving Canadians jobs just to yep. get their kids there, right? Yeah. Yep, you know, yep. get their kid there to, you know, hey, we'll give you a job. Well, great. But, you know, but they have to do that up there for sure. Because you don't have enough players. You really don't. I mean, yes, you train, and they train all year round, but really, are you, you're not going to get, your population isn't that big. Down right. here in the metro, to me, it's a little different. Yeah. Now you're just trying to get your kid somewhere to, you know, maybe it's more exposure. Maybe it's the parents that just want them to, you know, try to be something that they maybe are not going to be or whatever it is, but... It's 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 a weird it's a big business. Can you imagine football in Texas? Holy shit! <laughs> I mean, this yeah, is that can't trans- be good. That's transfer good. portal. Oh my god, <laughs> it's unbelievable. But yeah, it's 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 tough. There's no doubt about it because really, I mean, my kids went. You know, they they went to my daughter went to kindergarten here through third grade, but then we went back to where we were living at the time, and then we moved here. And I remember golfing with, you know, a couple of guys and call them still Billies or whatever. And they're like, oh, your daughter's coming back. I was like, oh, well, yeah. I mean, we we moved here and we lived here or we the kids went to school here before. But it was kind of weird, right? Because you're uh, taking spots away from kids. Oh, that, sure. And I, I kind of I felt bad, but I was like, we didn't just rent the freaking apartment. We actually moved, right. you know, right. and. Pot committed, you know, and it, it's worked out. I mean, she's got a lot of good friends, and it's worked out for her, right? But it's it's not easy. I hear you. Uh, the other thing I want to talk to you about, David, is you have a you had an article out which was uh, your dream team this year's dream team, yeah, uh, which I thought was great. Uh, it's always fun to see the the you know you, we always talk about the best kids in the state and who's you know you got Mister Hockey, but. Um, to put together a dream team for this year, I thought was pretty interesting, and um, you had some great names on the list. And uh, who who are you? Uh, who are you excited about? And and who maybe you, you get through the list and you narrow it down to who's your Mister Hockey finalist? Well, I thought you were going to ask about that dream team. How much flack I took? I took <laughs> oh my you God. always flack. I right? took quite a bit this year, wow. and, and I, part of the reason is I I've kind of resigned myself to this philosophy. Tell me if you agree or disagree. Um, the the get the kids that are going to be the Mr. Hockey types, the kids mm-hmm. that are going to be all Metro in the Star Tribune at the end of the year, those is a is a very clear body of work that's happening right now. And those kids, we kind of know who those people are. I feel like at the beginning for the Dream Team, just spread the love a little bit. Sure, you yeah. Know? Spread. The, I don't know where they're going to end up at the end of the year. Yeah, but they're good enough to put on a dream team. What the heck? What, Absolutely. What you, this isn't that. Doesn't have to be that precious. Right. That's you know, great. Let's spread the yeah, love. Spread it out. You know, and then and then the the other time I employ that philosophy is the, we we have the all metro first team. Now they're the ones in the photo, and then we have the second team and the third team. And I'll sneak kids onto the third team that maybe are, are the better players from the teams that maybe weren't the greatest. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you know, I had, I had some, one the coach was complaining about it, but I said, hey, if you want to keep kids in the game, <laughs> you got to be able to spread the love around, uh-huh. you know. And so, so that's, that's, I've kind of, you know, I don't, not to the point where it's just staggering how much that I might be reaching for a player, but I just figured it's, it's okay to, to, to make more kids, to, you know, more communities yep. 
you know, invest. That makes sense. What, yeah. yeah, or exactly. You know, if, if, if you're going to sit here and talk about if you're gonna keeping put the game. The dream intact. team's seven kids from Minnetonka. I mean, what, I mean what's right. the sense, right? No, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. And, you know, so I, so that's why I'm so, you know, Johnny Conlon from Mounds View. I got a, you know, a couple people, not, not critical of him, but uh, just, oh, hey, great pick, you know, the, the social media accounts. So, oh, hey, he made it here. Here's on the dream team. <coughs> Excuse me. So if that was a boost for the, the program's confidence, the player's confidence, I'm glad to be able to do it. Yeah, for sure. Do you get flack from coaches or, or parents or just trolls on the internet? Well, it's trolls, and it's probably parents in disguise. <laughs> yeah, right. And I, I, I've learned to kind of head them off at the pass when I say, okay, fine, who are you taking off the list? Yeah. Crickets. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, well, then, so, well, I, I don't want to single out a kid, like, you I mean, other than the way you're doing it right now. Yeah, right. You mm-hmm. know, so I've, that's been my comeback that generally stops them cold. So. Yeah. Oh, and, and, I mean, to your point, Bobby, about, like, you know, kids coming in from different places, switching schools, whatever. You know, you don't want to fault the kids. You know, the ki- they're kids at this age, and they're young, and they're you know they're trying to do their best they can. They want to make their best team. They want to you know build the best program. I think a lot of times it's parents pushing kids around and, and making them go places and making them hop around. But you know, and then to your point, David is. You know, you're just trying to give these kids pats on the back. You're trying to give them, boost them up a little bit, like great players. You know, like sure. it doesn't really matter where they play. They're really, they're great players and, and they're going to go places. You're in a, you're cut above just because yeah. you grew up and yeah. got your training and coaching here. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, you're right though. It's, I mean, it, it's not the kids. I've never, never seen a kid go that I want to go to Minnetonka. <laughs> right. uh, no, you don't. Cause yeah. they, they want to be comfortable. They want to be happy and they want to be a kid. Right. And, and, Parents, I mean, there's won't name any names, but there's a kid that played in Shakopee, then Rogers, and or no, then Maple Grove, now Rogers as a tenth grader, three schools in three years. How is that possible? A kid's phenomenal hockey player, but at what cost? Right. I mean, if he doesn't make pro, he sacrificed growing up with kids that he knew mm-hmm. as a child. I always say you have, you have when, you do, when you have that sort of track record, you have nowhere to go back to. You're right. You know, and yeah. I, 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 that's hard for me to to think about because I I do have a number of friends from my high school days that I'm heck this is uh, 2024 now, so 30th high school an, uh, uh, anniversary uh, reunion is is this this year. So, and I I I'm, I'd love I'm, I'm love loving the idea of. Going and back and seeing some folks, and, and that that you know, I can't imagine having put myself in a position to chase some kind of dream that it alienated me at the same time. You know, it's, yeah. that doesn't sound like a victory for me. No, it, that's it's just not to me. It's not common sense life. It's like you're. I feel like you're setting the kid up to fail, even if they succeed, which sounds weird. Are they really succeeding in the grand scheme of things? I mean, I think you're taking their emotional state and really fucking it up. I, I just, I mean, you, it, it's bigger than just hockey. It's bigger than baseball, football, whatever the sport you're talking about. They have to be part of something to build character and to build who, what, what they're all about. I agree. All right, one more thing I want to talk about. This is kind of like talking about the, these great teams great players we looked at um you know david your your book obviously uh turny time check it out um bloomington jefferson domination 92 to 94 you've got this minnetonka team which i think is when i watched them play and our kids play still water i was like man that might be one of the best teams i've ever seen play do you think um how do you think they stack up against uh, the greatest teams ever? I know I'm putting you on the spot. Maybe it's a, it's a big shoes to fill for these Minnetonka kids, but I look at that Jefferson team, I was like, whether it's the 92 team, the 93 it's team, the 94, every one of those teams, right. I looked them up, I was like, well, who do they have? Every time it was like, okay, well, this team didn't have Toby Peterson, but then they got Toby Peterson. This team they didn't got have Ben Clymer. Yeah, they had Ben Clymer. Right. It was like, and then you got these talking kids, like, pff, they got, what, seven, eight? college players on that squad so who do you think was the best uh high school program um based on your book and your research and they stack up against this minnetonka team 
I think I'm telling you, it's kind of a – we've shortchanged 2015 Lakeville North. Okay. How, how soon we forget. They're undefeated. They had six D1 kids that they could roll out. You know, and Yeah, I mean, they had uh, Jack – Though they had the uh, Jack Sadick, who was one of the defensemen. You had Jack McNeely, who was another one of the defensemen. You had the uh, uh, Paling twins and their brother. That was so between those five skaters, you got that's a uh, uh, Ryan Edquist, I believe, was the goalie. I'm trying to name, and they I, they call him Eddie because they had a call, did a call and response yeah. thing. The student section that he makes a big save. That's right. And someone Ryan yells Edquist. out. Eddie says. No. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's what I remember more about that. But, um, but yeah, that's uh, okay. yep. you're right. That was a tremendous team as well. <coughs> but, you know, Jefferson was my era. And I graduated in 1994. So I look at that 93 team. That's like, matter of fact, I, I, I would probably put that as my number one team. I wanted to deliver a stat. In our book, though I'm, I'm really frustrated that I wasn't able to do this, I wanted to know how long in the season did they trail. I, I know because, huh. and I I got all the box scores for all the games except for opening night, and what's what's frustrating about that is, or no, sorry, two two box scores I didn't get, um, and what's what's frustrating was that I think they beat in Grand Rapids like eleven to two. But Grand Rapids scored first. I at least knew that, but I didn't see actual box score. And Roseville did the same thing. They lost 6-1, but they scored first. Okay. So I wanted to be able to say, okay. Because in the Lakeville North chapter, of course, now with the hub, I had it was all right yeah. there. Yeah. So I was able to, whatever the number was, it was like 33 minutes all season they trailed, you know, which is insane. And I thought that Jefferson, I would I guess they would have that beat. You know, so, But I, I couldn't quite. You couldn't verify it. I couldn't verify it. No check mark. You are a real journalist. You're a real journalist. You actually verify stats. Well, you don't want to, you know, you want to make claims. You better be able to back them up. These days, you don't have to back anything up. Yeah, you just throw shit out there. (laughs) Yeah, see if it sticks. No, no. I got 5,000 likes in five minutes. (laughs) That's all good. Yeah, it's not my my way of doing it. Good for you. Yeah, that, uh. The 93 team had uh, Parrish, Crowley, LeFleur, DeWolf, Bianchi, Checo, uh, an amazing team. The 94 team had Crowley and Clymer, Toby Peterson, who played at Colorado College, Parrish, Bianchi, DeWolf. I think that's right. Um, God, what, like, Pankratz was on the 92 team. Played oh, at, yeah. He played at the U of M, too. Like, the U of M, the 92 team had – Pancrats played at the U. Lafleur played at the U. Treble played at the U. Crowley played at the U. Checo played at the U. Like, what's the chance of getting five players that all go to the University of Minnesota? Like, well, Hastings had something similar to that. But, yeah, but they, it was a little different. They only had three hockey players that went to the U. But in addition to that, they had a kid named uh, Mike. Is it Mike Bauer? I think was the yeah. basketball player. Yep. And then the, uh, the he was a goaltender, but Ben Utech was more football. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. but yeah, they had five guys go to the U and. That was a big deal for them too. <coughs> so, I'll, but yeah, I'll, I'll take the to answer your challenge of being put on the spot. Yeah, I'd take ninety two, ninety three Jefferson. Okay. What's your all time? So, the, the going off of that, the greatest team, the greatest, you know, the the dream team of this year, your dream team of all time, Minnesota hockey. Ooh, talk about putting them on the spot, oh, yeah. huh? Man, he's gonna he's gonna go deep into the northern archives. Well, that's the thing, yeah. Yep. It's like, and then what do you what do you base it on? I mean, oh, it's they, a, your team. I mean, it, you, well you could and, argue anything for sure. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about the high school. Uh, yep. Track record, but they also have to go into Harding and start fighting kids too. Well, on that's the east Paul side. Holmgren. Then yeah. I was to say that's Paulie Holmgren. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. After that, I don't know who else. Yeah. Jack Carlson, you throw him in the mix. Oh, Jack's got some mitts, man. Yep. That guy's got some mitts. Well, you'd have to I mean John Masich. Masich is numero uno. It's a cr- without... cliche almost to say, but he is that good. It yeah, was, was that good. He, it's just he was robbed. I mean, he he his his college career. He said it's kind of forgotten because the Gophers didn't do anything on a NCAA tournament level. And then he, he, there wasn't the pro hockey wasn't in the cards at, at that time for him. So, But he was a phenomenal player. Can't take anything away. A guy that plays four years and doesn't lose a game. I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, to me, he, there is nobody, nobody even close 
nobody even close to him. I mean, it's the records he has and what he did. And to hear stories like when he was over in Team USA in Europe in 1960, I believe it was, and his dad never saw him play a game. And all of a sudden the phone rings in Avalith, Minnesota. And his mom's like, well, Johnny must have done something good. And he answers the phone, mom, we won the gold. You know, nobody is even to me. Nobody's even close to what that guy did for hockey in Minnesota. He that everything about that story is true, other than the location they won that gold in Squaw Valley, California. Really? In '60, yeah. Oh shit! Well, you don't associate. I'm in California logistics too. With, you think I'd be better at you, that? You don't associate California with Winter Olympics, I know, but but yes, that was where they won the gold. They probably in didn't have many phones. Give me that at least. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, but. I mean, to me, one of the, my favorites also would be on my team would be George Palawa. Yeah. Uh, that guy was a he changed the, hockey. The, the great unknown. Oh, what a sad story that is! But six four two forty. I remember the first shift he had in the state tournament. I believe it was eighty six. That Bemidji dumped the puck in the in the zone, and he checked the guy behind the offense, the goalie, and the boards almost fell over. <laughs> I was like. Holy shit, what was that? He was a beast, but he, he had was, hands. Yeah. He had hockey. I mean, he had everything. And it's such an unfortunate demise what happened with that, but my God, he was unbelievable. He was sort of our Len Bias. Yeah, you you're, know? that's a good one. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. All right, Mayasich. Bobby's got Johnny's. Uh, Bobby's got. Uh, I'll take Palawa. Palawa. All right. Uh, who else you got? Nick. Phil Housley and uh, the recently departed Henry Boucher. Mm hmm. And then uh, trying to think of some of, you know, for what he did as a high school player, Spihar, I'd, I'd be dominant. I'd be remiss yeah. if I didn't include him because he was great. Do you follow his uh, Twitter account, his fake Twitter account? Yeah, <laughs> who is that? I don't know. But is it, it him is, or not? Who is talking all that it's shit? Fake. Yeah. I, is it? I, it's definitely not him. It says parody. I want to get it. It's, he's pretty we good. We need though. to get him on. I'm telling you. He's David's funny. like, he's not a real journalist. David yeah. checks his facts. He's, a, he's got the checkmark. just bar. throws shit out there. Especially Fake like, Dave Spihar, you're not real. How about Spihar saying Stillwater has practice jerseys? <laughs> 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 they were in their practice jerseys. Here you go. You got Mazich. You got Housley. You got Boucher. Uh, let's go. I think we need one more to make a full lineup here. You, you got go with one of the Jefferson kids from the greatest Who's the greatest team? Jefferson player? Crowley. Crowley. Yeah, Crowley. All right, Crowley. Yeah, Crowley. It is a lot of defensemen on this on the squad. I yeah, think, say, right? do we have a, a, the people in the right places? I don't uh, think so. We got Housley. We got Crowley. Uh, well, Housley's a D. I know that's what I'm saying. We got a ton well, of D. Boucher. Do we have he, a goalie? You got an all-time goalie? Well, it's got to be uh, shit. What's the kid from Columbia Heights? Reggie Miracle. Reggie Miracle. <laughs> Reggie Miracle. He's freaking. What do you have? About a hundred saves in the freaking one game in the state tournament. He was great. Yeah. Um, yeah, they beat defending champion Edina. And he, uh, but, you know, Doug Long from Johnson was, was phenomenal. Uh, you know, you can't take away John Casey, you know, up when he transferred over from Greenway to Grand Rapids. And, oh, and they won the 1980 hated. championship. They transferred from Harding to Johnson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah that I is. would never do such a thing. Shitty ass <laughs> Johnson. <laughs> Transfer from Codge Grove to Stillwater. Talk about it. He's a Johnson boy. Oh, he is a Johnson Remember boy. Remember that, that's right. right? That's right. You know where we were? Oh, we got it. No, we're gonna. We Don't that's a great batting. segue. That's a great segue. Oh, which, oh, okay. Before we segue, yeah. let's talk about Chill Boys real quick. Chill Boys is our sponsor here because we've been hanging out with Chill Boys for a long time, just like we've been hanging out with David Levake. and uh, they make three key products that you want to get your hands on, David. They make the best bamboo boxers and briefs okay it's got this material that is keeps the boys cool downstairs it's uh they got bamboo boxers this is the the first okay it's relaxed fit it's very you know traditional uh boxers and it's kind of like when you let the boy or let the dog off the leash to let it run free um very good bamboo boxer briefs little little snugger fit but um, they keep them cool too, uh, especially they, everything's organized down there. Definitely cool. And then they got the performance boxers, which is probably what the hockey players are wearing. It's a relaxed fit that's softer than probably your wife's most expensive yoga pants. And they feel like you've turned your favorite golf shirt into your favorite underwear. So check out chillboys.com. Use poll tab 15 for 15% off. Our boy Mark Howe 
did it. Call out to him. He's got his his new chill boys. Got, Mark or Matt? Was it Matt? Matt got the chill boys. Matt got the chill boys? Mark hasn't got any chill Mark boys. Got right Mark's got them on right now. We got a live studio audience. He's going to show them <laughs> off for the cameras. Uh, you get 50% off your chill boys. It is comfort where it counts. Love chill boys. I got them on too. You got them on too. Oh, that's yeah. an incredible amount of euphemisms in that ad. Oh, I know. It's a, <laughs> we're going deep with that. We're going sure. deep. Um, so you want to transition? But yes, into... let's transition to the bar of the week. Oh, we got the bar of the week. Okay, I, I experienced the bar of the week. Yep, yep. It's, you uh, might know this bar of the well, week. Well, he has to know if he went if to If you're Johnson. not, you got to get the hell out of our studio. <laughs> I, At least I, I know where I'm going if I have to leave. You know where I stop? Bar. <laughs> Where I stopped by tonight? Where'd you stop? Vogels. Yeah. Yes. Love I stopped by there, too. Vogels is epic. Vogels is like, I mean, it's like stand-up Franks from the, the Minneapolis area. Oh, sure. Yeah. You know, you go into Vogels. It's like you're in a time warp. It's, it's in like, a time warp. It's stayed, it's got to have stayed the same way, it's, same clientele. You're in, you're in like east side. You and, are in the heart. Yes, yep. And yeah. it looks like you're in 19, probably 75. Absolutely. Yeah. Great drinks. Okay, Great. you give it your review. All right. Well, I, I I think that one of the comments one of the people made in there is like, you can leave your purse on the bar and go outside and smoke, and you know your purse is going to be there. Because if you if it's not there, the person who takes it is not going to make it out of there alive. <laughs> you know. I mean, it's, it's I it's like a, it. It's in a hardcore area. Yeah. It's and it's, the clientele is. Loyal, tough, Very loyal, loyal. Yeah. Eastsiders. The guy, yeah. the guy I know that works there. He's been there for thirty-three years. Thirty-three years, and he's a great dude. I mean, it's it's a great spot. I had a new drink there tonight. You did. They added a little bit to our favorite drink. Mm -hmm. Little, just a touch of cranberry on a Jameson ginger. Okay, yeah. just a little top. Yeah, just it was a little good. floater. I was like, oh, don't screw it up. It was great. Yeah, it was okay. Bad. So, Bobby, here we go. Atmosphere. Atmosphere, I will give uh, eight because if you don't know people in there, uh, they're good, but they are kind of, they look like, who is this? <laughs> yeah, who is this like, just walked in? Guy coming into and you got to fit a certain demographic. A There's no crowd. question, but it, it's it's a great place. I yeah. love it. Okay. Next, your favorite uh, topic, drinks? Well, let's save that one. Okay. Let's we'll go, go atmosphere. Let's go food. Food's uh, uh, zero, uh, 1.0. Okay, how come? Because they have no food except for, well, they do have haggies, so let's move it up to three. Okay, they got haggies, yeah. yep. Uh, how about service? Service is great. Yeah. You know, people are, you know, attentive. I mean, it's a small little place, but but service is great. Bartender was fantastic. Bartenders are awesome. Yep. Yeah. We met the bartender who was working at the time. Yep. He's going to be there on Friday. Yeah. Drinks. Drinks are 9.99, because if you get a drink there, you got to get your plastic sheets out. Because things aren't going to work out so well <laughs> for you be, later. You might be whizzing the bed later. <laughs> might be whizzing the we bed We got a later. brand new drink I've never had before. Yeah. And a, 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 a playoff, my favorite. Playoff? And then what did they say to us about you get vogalized? You get vogalized. <laughs> you, you, I mean, they want us to take an Uber there oh. and an Uber out of there because you, you, you really can't walk out of there. Oh, we, man. It's, we had people offering to take us to dinner tonight. Like, come back. We're going to get hamburgers. We're coming back. We're going to get vogelized. Get an yeah. Uber. <laughs> it was great. Okay, and then how about the trifecta? The trifecta? Do they got golden tea? They have golden tea. Do they have touch tunes? They have touch tunes. Do they have... What's our pull tabs. pull tabs? They do. They got pulleys. Three oh in a row. God. The freaking trifecta at Vogels. I, honest to God, when I was driving there, I was like, Ugh, I don't know if they're going to have any of the trifecta. But it's they not have a all big three. place. It's no. not a big place. I was like, there's no way they have golden tea. And they have a little nook in the back where yeah. there's golden tea. A little nook and cranny I think back they there. They built it. All right, there's your Bobby's Bar Review of the Week. Um, I also want to do real quick how about the Dick of the Week? Can we talk Ooh, about the Dick of the Week? And you'll probably that. like this, Mr. LeVake. There used to become a time when you could go to a high school hockey game that you don't have a kid in or you just want to stop in. Yeah. Now you got to download an app. You got to go and figure out where the tickets are. You got to get a QR code. You got to scan a thing. You know, it's a pain in the ass. Like whoever pushed all these high school sports to, nope, sorry, you got to get the app and you got to do the blah, 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 and you got to download the things. Like you got my parents who aren't, aren't, like wanting to do that. I got friends who come in. They're like, oh, how do I buy a ticket? Oh, sorry, you got to download an app. And you're like, 
Is like, it by conference? I feel like it's every school but is different. It, every school is sometimes, different. And that sometimes makes no it's sense. the hometown so we app. At, sometimes it's not. We were at Cottage Grove just the other day, and they have the op- you know the option to QR code it or get the app. But you also can just go up to the counter and give them money. Yep, they took cash. Hey, like, yep. pretty common sense, right? Exactly. I remember I was really frustrated. I think it had gone to St. Michael Albertville. And, of course, I have my press pass, so it's fine. But it was, uh, was it cash? No, it was charge only at the gate. And then it was cash only at the at the, uh, what you, the concession stand. It's like, oh, well, how do how do we not have it? Right. <laughs> kind of both I mean, the They're same opposite. thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's frustrating. But yeah, I, I was it, I was covering the high school league board of directors meetings back when they were discussing that transition, and it had a lot of it had a lot of uh, elements went into that. So one, you know, COVID changed how they you know wanted to handle have more separation for people as you know less handling of money, less handling of you know inter- interactions. Uh, but then some of it's financial because the high school league it was it was costing them money to to have to supply tickets and you know they they did, that was not something they wanted to continue to do. Same reason we have uh, very shrunk uh, programs, if any programs at all, for the state tournaments. You know, you used to be able to get a full size tournament, beautiful uh, Terrence Fogarty painting on mm-hmm. it. Nope, not anymore. Hmm. So that's another thing that's that's an unfortunate way to. To save some bucks, you know, there's got to be another way. Well, the other way is they only have two refs for JV, and they only zam the ice like once. Oh, it drives a time. me nuts. <laughs> it drives me absolutely nuts. I'm uh, like, give me a break. Spend yeah. ten more minutes and play the goddamn game the right way. This uh, is this is yeah. high school hockey. Do the right things. I mean, these kids deserve that. Work their whole damn life to get there. Okay, how, let's do this. Do you have you have something? I got something. Go ahead. Okay. We got live studio studio on. So you want to play, Mark? <laughs> That's Matt. Is that Matt? <laughs> That's Mark. Shut up, it's Mark. <laughs> okay, we are gonna play <laughs> high school hockey trivia. You ready, oh, Salazar, the man behind the behind the curtain? Yeah, yeah, let's go. David, Bobby. Yep. Come on, Mike. Okay. Your name is your buzzer, just like K fan. Okay, if you know the answer, yell at your name. God, David. David's gonna kill this. All right, ready? Most appearances in the state tournament. David. Go. Edina East slash Edina. Are you talking about school in general? <laughs> South St. Paul. No, he got it. Fuck. You're going to mess with him? Oh. Jeez. I was worried. Oh, man, it's not Rosso, is it? But Well, it was, it's Edina East and Rosso. They're tied. Oh, okay. And now that Rosso will take over this year. Okay. Most championships. David. Go. International Falls. Nope. Bobby. Edina. Edina of course. Correct. What am I thinking? Jesus. E- you're correct. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you loser. Yeah. <laughs> Swing and a miss. One time. That's all you needed. That's all I That's need. Right. This is a hard one, but Damn David's going to get it. What was the game that had the most over? Bobby. Apple Valley Duluth East. Oh, most overtimes. I got that one. That's Johnson and, uh, oh, shoot, who do they put? Thief, Thief River Falls. Was that the matchup? You got the Thief River Falls correct. He it's did good. get it correct, then. He got Thief River Falls correct. Do you know how many overtimes it was? 11. You are correct. It's 11, but it Thief was. Thief River Falls and Minneapolis, one of the Minneapolis teams. Minneapolis Ooh, South. There we go. Okay. There it is. Jeez. What year? 55. You are correct. Who's the coach? <laughs> For which team? <laughs> oh my god! All right. As I and I, we get up and speak and, and present our book at, at uh, Rotary clubs, and one of the th- things that I always say is, "I hey, I I I'd bring the book up on the podium with me to to go through it and whatever." And I'd say, "Hey, I wrote the damn thing. I didn't memorize it." <laughs> so right. you know the the pages though. Yeah. Well, yeah. All right, Mark. You might get this one. Okay, Sal, you're not going to get this one. What year was the first state tournament at the XL? David, 2000. At the XL? Incorrect. No, shoot, that's 2001. 2001. Damn it. Ding, Mark, I heard you Mark say it. it. 
All right. Howell's got it. Field tech. Okay, who has the most consecutive win streak? High school hockey consecutive winning streak. Bobby. Consecutive games in a row. Bobby? International Falls. Incorrect. For a program now? For a program. Sal. Sal. Bloomington, since we just talked about it. You're in second place. David says Eveleth. David is correct. Oh, Eveleth. Why did has- I say I falls? Damn it. 79 Eveleth. They very good. Sal, the next closest program was Jefferson with 49. Could you imagine winning 49 games in a row and you still don't have the record? Oh, International Eveleth. Falls was in the 60s. I know. So. That's what I was thinking. So they, it, was, it was closer than, than Jefferson. God, so was right. it? Yeah. They had a streak that took what well, lasted into the 60s. But oh, this is fine. the problem is that the high school league is basically whatever the team reports. You know, they don't have ah. a research arm. So we, I remember we sent them a document. I said, if, if you, we can show you our work if, if you know, need to verify it. But these are the, I think it was like eight things wrong in your pro, tournament program, you know. So, they, yeah, that's just not what they excel uh, at. I think in 1987 to 90, Harding had a 75-game win streak. And we're like, yeah, what are you sweet? talking about here? Skeet? <laughs> So he said Badminton. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Badminton. <laughs> All right. Which program has lost the most high school hockey tournament games? Bobby. South St. Paul. Correct. Really? Bobby. Winner. Because they suck. Um, which team has scored the most goals in the high school hockey tournament? Bobby. Have a look. Incorrect. David Rozo. David. Correct. The, really? Rozo. Yes. Which team has lost the most overtime games in the high school hockey tournament? Bobby. Yep. Tell St. Paul. Incorrect. It's the same team that has the most Mark? overtime games played. Sal? Your favorite team, the Hill Murray Pios. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Very aggressive. Yeah, whatever. Okay, Bobby. Yep. Which team in the girls' state high school hockey tournament has the most appearances? Bobby, Roseville. Roseville? No. Incorrect. Hill Not Hill Murray. Edina. Not Edina. Minnetonka. Think about like... David Warroad? Incorrect. Damn. South St. Paul. South St. Paul. Yeah, Bobby was trying to... I went Broats instead of freaking... All right. It's another girls question. Which team has the most championships? Girls. Bobby. Class A or Class Double A? Oh, I, I got the. Yeah, you, you put your. I'll just in. go to South St. Paul again. I was gonna go with uh, Blake. You are both correct. Blake seven, South St. Paul has four. That's got to be Class A Double A, right? Or did they not split at that time? Well, I think South St. Paul has been A for a while now. Blake won all their championships yeah. at the single A level. That's why I would rip them every tournament. <laughs> <laughs> It got to the point where their coach, Sean Reed, who's, who's a great guy, he he would preempt me by saying, and no, David, we're not t- talking about uh, moving up next year or something like that. He would start the press conferences like that. That's funny. At the Hermantown. Yeah, right, right. Uh, let's see. Where should we end with one more? End with one more. All right, which boys team has the most shutouts for those hockey dads? Hey, Siri. <laughs> <laughs> There's boys some shenanigans shutouts. behind the most curtain. Most shutouts. Boys team? State tournament. I'll go Bobby, Lakeville North. No. All right. Go back in time. Oh, I know where you're going. What did he say? I said go back in time. Mark, Edina. Mark is incorrect. 
That will right, Cla. Yeah, I really don't know. Incorrect. Who's your who's who's your favorite squad of all time? Johnson. Governors? No, nope. Eveleth. Oh. oh, Eveleth. Governors are his favorite. It's the Gubby. The Gubby. The Guppy. Uh huh. It's good. <clears throat> all right. There you go. That was trivia. That with, was uh, David Levake, Bobby Finn. I think David Levake won. I think he did too. I'm pretty sure he did. I don't think anybody lost. That, that's, that's we're all winners yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Bunch of winners. That's right. We are a bunch of winners. Well, let's let's do this. Let's uh, take a little, you know, a little segue and thank another one of our new sponsors. Looking for a vodka with unparalleled purity and unmistakable taste? Look no further than Stoli Vodka. Distilled with the finest European source grains, Stoli is perfect for mixing into cocktails or savoring on the rocks. With a wide range of flavors, Stoli offers something for everyone. Make your moments memorable with the spirit of Stoli Vodka. Pick up a bottle of Stoli today at your favorite liquor store. Oh, yeah. Let's, talk, let's hear a word from our sponsor, Duke Cannon. Here in Minnesota, hockey hair is our superpower, and no one does men's grooming better than the folks at Duke Cannon. Whether you're looking for a giant bar of soap that smells like bush light or some news anchor shampoo for the showers after your next beer league skate, Duke Cannon has you covered. And once you're toweled off, grab some serious flow styling putty to tame your mane. Because whether your hair is a weapon or you wish it was, the only choice is Duke Cannon. They're an active supporter of our armed forces with proceeds of sales going to support the U.S. military. Duke Cannon is a Minnesota company that makes hardworking products for hardworking men. So just visit DukeCannon.com. That's Duke Cannon. Work harder. Smell better. All right, uh, David, let's talk about a rumor that I heard is that um, Edina is going to play their section games um, right there in Edina. And then Minnetonka gets to host their section games. Did you hear that rumor this year? I did not. What's yeah. the uh, rationale behind that? Well, I guess Hill Murray gets to host their section games at Aldrich, so they're going to let Edina host their section games, and Minnetonka is going to host their section games. They figured out, you know, like, let's just let the... I heard it was Title Nine. Really? They all wanted to play at, at Braemar and, and Minnetonka. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> However, <laughs> it would be a travesty if they could, right? So why are our friends at Hill Murray getting to host all, at Aldrich? Why does Edina have to go to Big? Why do the kids at, um, you know, Minnet uh, Minnetonka, they go to Braemar, right? Yeah. Um, and then the girls' high school programs, they all said, we don't want to play at Aldrich anymore. And they said, okay, we'll move you out, and we're going to, like, move those They were actually going to rotate it. Yeah, but now they're back at Aldrich. Yeah, because of Title IX. Because Title IX. Because they want to play where the boys play there was a meeting, a section meeting, probably a month and a half ago, that everything was already done. It was done last year. And apparently a parent came in and said, hang on, my daughter wants to play where the boys play. So we're claiming the Title IX card. So I'm not, I'm not tracking what, <laughs> to what teams are trying to make sure they can there's, play at Aldrich. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors here. Yeah, no, well, there's, it's, there's, well, Hill Murray wants to play there. Yeah. So a parent came into the meeting and said, well, my daughter should play where the girls play or where the boys play. Just like I've always been a proponent, if if I'm, if I'm my daughter makes it to the state tournament, I want her to play at Mariucci where the stands are packed. I don't want her to play at XL where there's, you can't even, I mean, there's nobody there. Are you talking Mariucci or Ritter? I would say Mariucci for the state tournament. Yeah, you think they'd I mean, get 10,000, huh? Well, I think they'd get a good, I mean, a good crowd. It'd be more full than it is at the X. Well, sure. Sure. But I just think that it shouldn't be it shouldn't be just about playing where the boys play. It's about playing where it's what's best for I mean, for the what kids. what's best for the kids? I mean the kids they want to fill up an arena, they want to feel special, whatever. But having people come into meetings claiming title nine card, Aldridge is a shithole. I played there back in nineteen ninety and it's it hasn't changed one bit. And it's not a great arena. Yes, they have good parking, but they have stands on both sides. So what it was going to they be? Have great hot dogs. They have they, what I've heard is the great hot dog kind of sword did give him give <laughs> them an unbelievable great rating. Hot dogs. <laughs> Mike Tosball, <laughs> you are you are the kind of sewer. Great but, hot dogs. Um, you know they were going to rotate it because they needed stands on both sides of the rink. They needed a good parking. You know, so it, 
And now all of a sudden it's back to Aldridge. And the other two arenas that have stands on both sides, they're out. So where was it? So last year was at Stillwater. Sections were at Stillwater. No, no. Last year the sections were at. Aldridge? They're all at Aldridge. Oh, and then I thought. So, so this year was supposed. This to year rotate? was supposed to be at Stillwater. Next year was going to be at Roseville, and then the year after that was Aldridge. And we're talking girls. And they were going to rotate. Hockey. Yeah, yep. because the boys. They, so now they're back they at Aldridge. Right. So and and Dave, I think last time we talked to you, you thought you. I think you were saying like, well, you know, there's, there's not a great solution for it, right? Because you got money into it. You've got. You need this, you need the seating. You've got travel into it as well, and uh, I think you know our side of the story as we're like kind of BSing with it and like throwing weird stuff at your at, at the wall. But um, but it's kind of funny. Elk River goes to Duluth. Yeah. So they're traveling two hours or an hour and a half north. Yeah. I think Rochester all stays around Rochester. I think that's the other section that is. Which does, makes doesn't sense. Rochester. I thought they went to Lakeville. Do they go to Lakeville? Okay. Oh, do or, they? No, I run the other way around. Lakeville will go Lake to Rochester. Lakeville goes to Rochester. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Lakeville will have to go to Rochester, okay. yeah. So that's the other section that plays, a team plays their home games um, in their home rank. But Section uh, 7, Duluth, if they play at Amsoil, what do you do with that, you know? But that's not their home rank, though, right? No, but it's It is in close. Duluth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just it. like Rochester. I don't think Rochester plays on their rank. I think they play on... Gotcha. In that complex, but, but which is exactly similar, right? Moment. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, I think it's weird to go into Hill Murray and you got the HM on the ice. They take the banners down, um, and I agree. It's you know, it's a great. You say it's not a great facility. It's a decent facility. I think you it got sucks. the size. You got the size. You got the parking. I know people don't have to travel far, but people travel far every day of the week for their kids' hockey. They will drive to Minnetonka. Or they will drive to Elk River for games. We go to Forest Lake. We go to Wyzetta or Minnetonka. You're Howard Dean right now? Edina doesn't. And this was my joke at the beginning of this. was like Edina doesn't play their section games at Edina. They move them over to big. They could. They could easily play easily. Edina. You know? And I know it's, what, 10 minutes down the road, but, like, why do they do the swap? We could we could play our section games at, at Braemar, and they could come out to – they could come out to uh, Aldrich. I don't know. I, I, I think it's a high school league. I don't think really thinks about it that hard. And I think the athletic directors don't really think about it that hard. They're like, I don't know. What's easiest? What's easiest, everybody? Yeah, let's just go with it. Sound good? Let's go with it. Well, I know there's, has, there's forces that are controlling that. There's puppet masters that are making sure things happen the way Puppet they... masters have been called out by the Bobby Findles <laughs> Everyone podcast. David Levesque's like, eh, I work for a big publication. Well, I, I was wondering... Um, <laughs> when I'm gonna get hit puberty, no. Um, I'm. I was wondering what would what, what relief would the Saint Th- the pending Saint Thomas University of Saint Thomas that's it. rink well, if that would pri- that's going to be. Here? I believe it is. Yeah. I truly hmm. believe like new fair that is where. Yep, that is where it will eventually be. And that's where it should be. It sh- there should be nobody with a home f- homework advantage because you may not think it matters, but it still matters. This is where teams practice all the time. This is where they get dressed. This is where, this is home to them. So even though it shouldn't matter, I still think psychologically, and knowing boards, knowing the rink, knowing the ice, I think it matters. Mm-hmm. But it is what it is. Yeah, it is. God, we broke it down here. Broke it down. Talking about puppet masters. We're talking about Geppetto. Geppettos. What else you got? I always called else? your I always called your brother Geppetto. Because he was controlling everything. Plug the book, David. Oh, uh, sure. I think the uh, so the revised and updated version of Tourney Time will be out in, so probably sometime in February. We haven't gotten an exact date on that yet. But it's going to be picking up where the last one left off, which was the 2019 state tournament. We picked uh, put the tournament chapters for 2020, 21, 22, and 23. So we have the four champions uh, there, but then we also have sidebars on Hermantown, Matamidi, and Hill Murray, actually. So we, we, uh, we're we very proud of it. I think what you'll notice the most is that there's, there's a lot more single-A content in this version of the book, which, you know, deservedly so. And uh, the, you know, but everything else is the same. It's just still great storytelling, still great photography. And I, I was a little nervous because, you know, it hasn't been that long since the first version of the book, and I thought... It's going to be tough to turn around and try to sell it again. But somebody said, well, they print the Guinness Book of World Records every year, and that mm-hmm. sells. Fair enough. So let's get out there and sell that book. And we're actually going to do 
uh, try two new avenues that we didn't try before. That the wild game, they they make a pr- uh, big deal out of promoting the people that are there to sell, and then also our contacts, my contacts with the Star Tribune. I want to have a presence at the state fair booth this year. So those are the things we haven't tried before, but I think that'll be they'll be good things. And I, we believe it, we believe in our product, and we we know it's in, uh, enriched lives and, and influenced people. So we, we we're we're at it, happy to to go and do it again. Yeah, that's no, great. that's fantastic. I mean, it is great. The history, I mean, that's one of the things I love about sports is the history, the stats, and all. You know, it just, it's timeless, right? right. You, I mean, you can look back 50 years ago and see unbelievable players doing unbelievable things, right? All but, right, wrap it know, up, Bobby. Wrap it up. Yep. David, thanks for coming on again. I appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate you coming on. I know you're sick, and, you know, obviously life's throwing everybody a lot of challenges, ups and downs, and, and everything we do every day, but kind of goes on to what we we truly believe it's like you know try to be a good person do the right things and look out for each other and you know what i mean it's life's too hard if everybody's going through and just honking at somebody and not doing the right things it, it makes it that much harder and worse right but you know look look out for each other be a good person you know and do the right things but you know i we haven't talked about spotify and all that other shit but I don't care, but it's it's about. I truly believe. Don't if you if you live life and don't be a dick, it's going to be good for everybody. Absolutely, so, absolutely. But thanks again. Thanks, David. Thank everybody, you, everybody. Uh, thanks, Al. Thanks to the live studio audience. Live studio, <laughs> first time for live studio. Yep, absolutely. All right, but thanks everybody for tuning in. Watch us uh, on YouTube. Like and subscribe. Spotify, you, Apple, and all their platforms and. Uh, We'll be seeing you again. Don't, don't be, be a, a dick. dick. <laughs> We're out. Three long days from I don't know. It takes a little more than what you show. And that's yesterday. Yeah, yesterday.